Mr. President, thank you for being here as we get set for a wonderful day I'm in happy sports. To be. Opening day for America's national pastime. So as thankful as we are to have baseball starting on time this year, we are obviously still in the rollout phase of the COVID-19 vaccine, and that affects teams and fans, everybody. So, Mr. President, how do you envision this season going with so much up in the air still? Well, there's not so much up in the air if we, if we listen. What I was able to do is get over 600 million doses of the, uh, of, of the vaccines available, the three vaccines. We've been, I, when I announced I've only been in office a little over 100 days, not, not quite 100 days, and uh, I announced we were going to do, we're going to make sure we did uh, 100 million shots. We're going to be up to 200 million. We have 600 million vaccinations available. By, uh, and so we have enough to begin to vaccinate everybody in the entire United States. But people have to be responsible, mm -hmm. Sage. They have to continue in the meantime to wear masks when they're around someone. I have my mask off now because I, there's no one within 30 feet of me. But you have to wash your hands and keep social distancing. And so it's going to be a little while. We can't, uh, you know, and some people are, think they're being tough guys, not wearing masks. Well, guess what? They're, they're, they're hurting themselves and other people. You have a patriotic duty to protect the people around you. But God willing, the way the vaccines are getting out now and the way we're working, I think uh, we ought to be able to, uh, as I set a goal, that by the 4th of July, I'd be able to at least have a small barbecue in the backyard with family. And uh, by the time we get into the fall, hopefully things are moving. I don't think early in the baseball season it's going to happen, though. Well, we're looking forward to, to all of those days, those barbecues. And when you talk specifically about athletes and fans, many of whom have gotten the vaccine, others looking forward to it, there are people who are hesitant, athletes who are hesitant. So, Mr. President, yeah. if you're in a clubhouse or a locker room with those athletes, what would you say to those who are hesitant to get vaccinated? I'd say, look, I'm president of the United States. I got vaccinated. You know, it's not, I, I don't have an unimportant job. Would I take the vaccination, the vaccine, if I didn't think, if I thought it was going to hurt me or affect my capacity? Look, we've done an incredible scientific research on the three vaccines that we're using now, the J&J, &J, Pfizer, and Moderna, and they work. There's even studies now showing that, that with the Pfizer, it works on younger people, 15, 16, 17 years old. So we're making progress, but we have to get to the point where enough people have taken the vaccine so you've diminished exponentially the prospect of it being able to continue to spread. You know, I carry in my pocket a, uh, a, 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 my schedule, and every single day I have my staff, I don't, would I take it out here? Every single day I have my staff list the total number of people who have died as a consequence of, these, of, of this COVID crisis. It's 547,296 people dead. We've got to be more responsible. So on that note, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about what's going on in Texas. And as you know, Governor Greg Abbott lifted the mask mandate in his state, allowing businesses to operate at full capacity. So the Texas Rangers say there will not be any attendance restrictions in their stadium this season. That means it could be filled to capacity, Mr. President, 40,000 people with masks required except when actively eating and drinking. What are your thoughts on the Rangers' decision? Well, that's a decision they made. I think it's a mistake. They should listen to Dr. Fauci and the scientists and the experts. Um, and, uh, but uh, I think it's not responsible. So it's also not just baseball. It's in football as well. As you know, Commissioner Goodell said Tuesday, the league is making plans to open its stadiums to full capacity for the upcoming season. Is it different maybe with them because the preseason is, is four months from now? versus the Major League Baseball season beginning now. What's your reaction to Commissioner Goodell's decision right now? Well, the longer time we have to get more people vaccinated, we're now at the point where we have almost 75, we'll have 75% of the people over the age of 65, the most vulnerable population, vaccinated. And we're moving across the board that way. We're significantly increasing the number of people vaccinated. And that's going to diminish the prospects of its spread. And so, but I think it's, it's just in terms of being responsible. You see what's happening in Europe now when they lifted the mandates. They're going back. I, I don't know why we just don't follow the science and beat this. Just flat out beat it. We're going to have enough vaccination, vaccinations. 
vaccinators. I've gotten thousands more vaccinators, people to do the vaccinations. We've opened up places, uh, particularly for, there's some communities that are really hesitant because of past history. The black community knows that as recently as the end of World War II, there was experimentation on, you know, African Americans. That's not happening now, but I understand the hesitancy. And we're, we're doing everything we can to make it clear to people, get the vaccine as quickly as you can get it. Get in line. And by the end of, by the end of this month, we're going to be in a position where everyone, everyone, in fact, is going to be able to get the vaccine, no matter what your age. There's not going to be only people over 65, et cetera. I and want so to I switch. think we should move in that direction. I'd like to switch gears quickly, Mr. President. Sports and politics cross paths sometimes. That's exactly what happened last week in Major League Baseball. Tony Clark is the executive director of the Major League Baseball Players Association. He said he would, quote, look forward to discussing moving the All-Star game out of Atlanta because Georgia Governor Brian Kemp signed into law a bill passed by the Republican-led state legislature to overhaul how its state elections are run. So, Mr. President, what do you think about the possibility that baseball decides to move their All-Star game out of Atlanta because of this political issue? I think today's professional athletes are acting incredibly responsibly. I would strongly support them doing that. People look to them. They're leaders. Look at what's happened with the NBA as well. Look at what's happened across the board. The very people who are victimized the most are the people who are the leaders in these, in these various sports. And it's just not right. This is Jim Crow on steroids, what they're doing in, in Georgia and 40 other states. What is it all about? Imagine passing a law saying you cannot provide water or food for someone standing in line to vote. You can't do that? Come on. Or you're going to close a polling place at 5 o'clock when working people just get off? This is all about keeping working folks and ordinary folks that I grew up with from being able to vote. If they do decide to move the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, it won't be the first time in professional sports they moved the 2017 uh, NBA All-Star Game out of Charlotte for political reasons as well. Uh, final question, Mr. President. I know you're a sports fan. I yep. know the First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, is a sports fan. You're from Scranton, Pennsylvania. She's, She's from Philadelphia. And you've described her as a diehard Phillies fan. I mean, we know how intense and oh. passionate Philly fans are. So can you give us a glimpse? When Dr. Biden is watching Philly's games, what is she like? You don't talk to her. <laughs> you don't talk to her. And the other, the other time, like, for example, I was having a meeting when I'm vice president when the Flyers were in the playoffs. We have a German shepherd who was an old guy now, he, but he, he was much younger. And I'm downstairs with, with a meeting with the Republican and Democratic leadership trying to work out a deal. And all of a sudden, they're, ah, whoa, screaming, coming from upstairs. <laughs> I walk upstairs. She's sitting, swear to God, sitting in front of his television with our dog, Champ, with a Flyers jersey on. The dog had the Flyers jersey on. The dog did. On, watching the game. The dog did. She put it on the dog. But she is a, look, the Philadelphia fans are incredibly knowledgeable fans. But boy, are they tough. They are really tough, tough fans. They are tough, and what I would do to be a fly on the wall with the first lady yelling and screaming at the TV with the dog right there. I, I imagine you just have to walk out of the room at times, right? Well, I, mean, I, I do, but one <laughs> of the things is that, you know, it's interesting. The, I, I thought I was a pretty good athlete in high school and, uh, and when I played ball, baseball and football, and, uh, and, my, and my brothers as well, but uh, the real athletes in our, in our family are... are are, 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 are the women. Um, I have a young daughter, a granddaughter, I should say, who is two, team, two state, state, all state in two sports. Wow. And almost in a third sport. Uh, I got uh, all, all the girls in my family are they're really competitive, good athletes. I have a niece who was an All-American. Uh, and then one, I, just, just some really, really talented women in my family. So... I, I, I take the back seat you know, to the women in my family. Although we know, we know that back in the day, President Biden was getting it done on the football field at the University of Delaware. But, but I like that you're focusing on, on the women in your family. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, they are. I tell you what, it's, uh, and it's about time they get paid, by the way.
the idea that we have, we, we, we went to the World Cup uh, in 15 with my granddaughters out in, out in, uh, in Vancouver and watched the women's team win. We watched, we went to the, also in South Africa. Anyway, and the idea that these women are getting paid, depending just overall women, 82 cents on the dollar. If you're a black woman, it's like 55 cents on the dollar generically just across the board but the idea that uh, you know women soccer players who are, are are getting paid so much less than the men i just don't think it's right i don't think it's fair i know that and recently you, you met a with a big with, supporter of title nine right and i know you met with megan rapino and other athletes recently to talk about yeah. just that and that that means so much to everybody not just women but throughout the sports world just like the rest of us mr president i know that you would I think love so too to get, I know you'd love to get sports back as quickly and safely as possible. So thank you for what you're doing. Absolutely, and, and positively. Thank well, you. Well, the one thing is I, uh, I, I, when I threw the first pitch out in Washington a couple years ago, I remember everybody talked about, they said, why are you doing it from the rubber? I said, because that's where you pitch from. And I thank God I was, and the, the catcher at the time said, well, it was a typical ball high and outside. At least it went across the plate. <laughs> that is and a victory. Absolutely. President Joe Biden, I cannot that, that thank, you, victory. thank you enough Thanks for your time lot. for joining us here on ESPN. Thank you so much. We hope to talk to you soon. I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to meeting you personally. Thank, thank you. you.